Hey everybody, this is Danny with Legendary Muscle and today I'm here with my good friend John and his 1965 Dodge Coronet 500. Thanks for being on the show again. Thank you for having me. So John, um, this is one more car to your collection and John is now the official holder of the title of having the most cars on the show yeah. and that's a great sign because it means that you're having fun with your cars and yeah and you know that's what life's about especially if you own cars you need to have fun with them and, and just enjoy your time absolutely um, so tell me about this car I mean I, I, I recall you saying something about you've you've seen this car in the past before you purchased it a while back ago surprisingly I ran across some pictures uh, a friend of mine Phil and I went to Lakeland um, back in 2020 February mm -hmm. 22nd actually and uh, I was looking through my pictures and I saw that I had taken a picture of this not knowing whose it was or anything it was just uh, being shown at the show and uh, so I saw it in Lakeland and then subsequently I saw it at the villages show okay. uh, shows uh, on a, like two other occasions before I really knew anything about the car Oh, okay. So, um, what did when you saw the car before? It wasn't for sale at the time, right? No, it wasn't for sale. I just thought it was a clean, nice-looking car. I caught my and, attention, and that's and then, all I knew. When did you when did you buy it? I mean, how did you come across it? Well, what happened is, is I sold one of the other cars, and uh, I was looking for another Mopar. Mm -hmm. And so I asked um, a couple people if they knew of somebody privately that had a car for sale that uh, was in good shape, you know, that, that they knew firsthand. Okay. And they were like, oh, I don't know. And then a little while after that, uh, the, the couple came to me and said, oh, my, my friend Benny has a car uh, that he might entertain selling, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay, what is it? And they told me it was the 65 Coronet 500. And I'm like, oh, okay, I already own a 65 Plymouth. And I'm like, uh, well, yeah, let me see. So he, he was over by Donellan. And uh, so I went to take a look at it and uh, went from there. That was uh, mid-year last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I remember. I think this was the last car you got, right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, the paint job on it. This car, just to start off with, looks very original. Minus the rims, but it looks pretty much how you would have got this off the showroom floor. Well, that's what kind part. of enticed me. I've had blower cars and jacked up fat tires, you know, which is, is a lot me. Mm -hmm. My wife doesn't think this car is me, you know, yeah. but I wanted something that was just, you could eat off of. The other cars were just that way, but, but a factory original. Yeah. So that's what drew me to this car. It was a, a stock motor, um, just a, a couple you know, little changes. This is the original color with one repaint. Okay. Um, and um, there's been a few changes to it, um, but I have all the original parts. Okay. That, so, so it could go back to day one, you know, right. like it rolled off the showroom floor mm -hmm. with the 14 inch tires with hubcaps. And, okay. So anything that's know. modified on this car, which is almost nothing. Right can still be put back to original with the original parts that came with it. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I thought that was a good uh, thing to have. Mm. Um, so, the the interior wise, um, being a 500, you said these came with bucket seats, right? Right, right. Um, they did have other models of this car, right? Yes, they had the base Coronet, Coronet Deluxe, the Coronet 440, and the Coronet 500, which was the top of the line, had extra trim, bucket uh -huh. seats console mounted uh, shifter you know some other um, things such as you know this on here and, oh, okay, and the, on the back of the car things highlights. of that nature yeah mm -hmm. you know the Coronet 440 confuses a lot of people I had a 68 Coronet 440 and they think it's the engine is a 440 but it's a model yeah and so <laughs> you know people are always getting that confused that are non Mopar people yeah. you know so it's, it's, otherwise it's, this would have a 500 engine in it yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true right because I meant Mopar is famous for two engines right the 440 and right. the, the the 426 right the Hemi yeah so uh, the other models that you were talking about did they all did they come with the bucket seats in there or were they bench seats I mean, what were the no, differences right right well the the base model Coronet would come through with a I think it's a 170 cubic inch or 225 slant six uh -huh. you know um, and go from there um, and in the uh, Coronet line there was um, five uh, engines you could pick from not like a okay. new Mustang today you, yeah. you get one engine you you had choices back then and uh, so this engine here is a 361 it's kind of in the middle of the pack gotcha. um, but it's still a big block 
mm -hmm. um, and it came through with a two barrel, but you could get the two um, six cylinders um, uh, in the other coronets. The base engine in this car was a 273. That oh, was okay. a standard coronet 500 was a 273, but you could get the, the 361, two different versions of 383, and then a 426 uh, wedge or a Hemi. Oh, in, in the 500? That's what it says, yeah. Wow. So, um, okay, engine-wise, um, it's not the Hemi, but as the rest of the car, would you say this would be the, like the top of the line, trim-wise? It is trim-wise. Trim it definitely huh? is. The 500 is, has all the ornate things, the, the buckets, mm -hmm. you know, the things of that nature, the little fancier door panels, you know, thing, things yeah. of that nature. That's, that's cool. Um, and it's funny how... This is very similar to your 65 Belvedere, if right. you look at it from the side. Right. Uh, min minus the, the, the slope of the rear end a little bit. But yes. It, it, yeah. It's very well, they're both, both of my 65s are hard tops. Uh -huh. So you get that open air, and then it's got that, you know, roof line that it's pretty famous for, yeah. you know. People always say, oh, I love that roof line, you know, whether it's this or that car. And have you, you know? ever had anybody, like, when they're walking up to your car before they see the front or the back, do they get confused? Like, have you ever had somebody come and say, oh, nice Belvedere? You know, uh, not a no, Mopar not yet. guide's not going to do that. Not but. yet. I haven't had that yet, no. Mm, okay, because they're very similar. Uh, the only, if you look at it sideways, like I said, very similar. In front, it's just the grill is different from yep. your, your 65. Yep. Your 65 had, what, the two two headlights in front, right? Two headlights, and they have a little, like, little um, hood over, like, the lights. I, I mm -hmm. prefer the look of the 65 a little nicer, although I do like this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also the rear end of the... the um, your Belvedere mm -hmm. also is, it's, it's got a little bit more of a sporty look. Yes. It's funny how Plymouth was supposed to be the cheaper right. brand, but they adopted the more sporty look. You're right. They were able to pull that like, off. Yeah. They, they were kind of like focusing maybe on the younger generation, you think? Uh, I Since, think so. Yeah, like I mean, the parent, if they bought a first car for their kid, they want it to be something cheap, right? Right. So the kid will be interested. Oh, that looks sporty. So it's a win-win situation, right. I think. Right, it would be good marketing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, your, your rims that you have on here, what kind of rims are those? These are, um, these are Torque Thrust twos, mm -hmm. um, a variation of that. Uh, these are American Racing, I believe. Uh, it, these are 15-inch. Okay. Um, it originally came with 14-inch mm -hmm. uh, steel wheels with pretty ornate hubcaps okay. um, that were on here before, but these are 15-inch uh, now. Gotcha. So did you have to do anything to this car when you got it? Um, um, well, when I first got it, it wasn't really running, and I had a problem with it for a couple months. The distributor had died and couldn't figure out the problems, and one thing led to another, and I couldn't figure it out. Mm. So finally, yeah, that got straightened out, and here we are today, you know, trying okay. to get as much use as I can. Oh, definitely. And um, going back to the, the brakes and suspension-wise, did, did you do any upgrades, or did the previous owner do any upgrades, or is that pretty much all stock right there? No, th this car is quite stock. It's okay. got the, just like the 65 Plymouth, it's got a single <laughs> master cylinder, <laughs> which is taking your life in your own hands. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Haven't gotten around to changing that yet. It's been 10 years you know? <laughs> yeah. so but um so all of that's uh there the only other thing underneath the hood that that was changed is got chrome valve covers um you know but i have the original ones okay. at home so just a, a few small things so i mean i've done a lot of cars in, in our episode and our episodes and most of them are not stock so what do you say we have a look at the stock engine sure all right yep okay so this is what a non-molested engine looks like. For the most part. For the most part. Yes. Okay, so what do we have here? This is your... This is a uh, 361 cubic inch big block. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, I believe it's a B-deck motor. Um, this motor originally came from uh, Chrysler with a two barrel intake and a two barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that's been changed on here is it's got a four barrel intake, four barrel, and it's got the chrome um, valve covers. Okay. I have all of those original parts still. Um, the intake, the carburetor, the valve covers. Um, we'll see on the inside, there's a newer radio, but I have the original radio. Mm -hmm. Got the original wheels and hubcaps, so I have all those things uh, for it. But that's what this and is And I'm here. surprised to look at this and see it's still got the, the exhaust manifolds and not headers. Everything I have has, has, has had headers except this. This is, like I said, as stock as I can get them. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, are you getting the itch sometimes? Like, oh, maybe I you should know, change this. You know, I don't this. know. When I'm going down the road in this, and I'm 50 miles an hour, you know, you and I can have a conversation. It's super quiet. It's just 
tooling along, you know, there's no rumble, mm -hmm. you know, and I love rumble. Yeah. But it, it's kind of nice to be different in that respect. Yeah. You know. So I see your 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 brake uh, <laughs> master <laughs> cylinder over there. Yeah. That's the. the that's, that's the culprit. The, when that loses fluid, yeah. you have no brakes. Drive at your own risk. Right. Huh? So I try to check that semi-frequently. Okay. <laughs> so what kind of transmission does this come with? This is a three-speed torque flight automatic okay. um, uh, on, the, on the floor, on the console, okay. with the console. Now, are these matching numbers to your car? This is all matching numbers. Ma matching numbers car? Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, uh, what kind of rear end do these come with? You could get a, um, a sure grip rear, which is... Chevy people call Posi mm -hmm. um, on here. Uh, I was just looking up some of that information uh, earlier today, and uh, you could get it with this car. I don't know if this one is equipped with Sure Grip yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, uh, I was looking at the gear ratios, and I think the standard gear ratio for this is a 323, which is, is a good overall gear. Okay. Um, this original. Th this car came originally as the base engine is a 273. So this yep. is a, a slight upgrade. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, um, I mean, I don't recall driving in a almost completely stock car. Uh, do you think we can take it for a ride? Sure, we can take it for a ride. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking us for a ride in the car again. Yeah, no problem. Um, so this interior, it's got a lot of pizzazz to it, I see. Uh, it's got a lot of chrome, polished aluminum and everything. Was this only for the 500? Yeah, this is only for the 500. It has some extra trim on the doors, and uh -huh. it's got the uh, the buckets and the console, and just you know, nice little things. We're still using the push button for the heat. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, such as that. It, it, and uh, it looks really nice though on the inside. I think they did a good job of styling. Oh yeah. And you even got a coronet on your your steering wheel, which I see. Coronet. It's, there. it's not just Dodge. It's actually coronet. Yep. So is that a is that a clock down there? This um, or is that supposed? I to guess be a could clock? be for a clock, but I was reading up on this. They actually have a tack oh, okay. that oh. fits in there um, in some of the brochures. They show it as, okay. as an offering. So it would be like an extra option if you wanted. Yeah, to... yeah, you could get a tack in there. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, the, these, that'd be nice to get. These cars are real nice, and, and like I say, it, this fits just right next to your Belvedere. Yeah. Both the both both sixty fives. Yep. One is the version of the other. And but and they're complete opposite versions. Opposite yeah. brands. Yep. Opposite trend levels. Right. And right. opposite ways that you have them. One's the more streetable and the other one's more the street rod. Right. Exactly. That's cool. So um with I know you got these rims on it, but do you ever plan on changing anything on these car on this car? Um, um, I wouldn't be too much um, against seeing what it looked like with the original wheels and, and hubcaps. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, like I said, they're pretty ornate. They yeah. are hubcaps, though. Would you ever change the rims to like anything more? I don't know. Or you want to keep uh, you want to keep the old school look, right? Yeah, yeah. And I like these rims. These rims, I think, uh, accentuate the, the car just nice enough. Now, being such a comfortable ride, and I know it's an old car. All cars are old, and well, when they are old, they'll get problems no matter if it's all original or if it's a modified one. But do you plan on taking this car very far on the drive? Well, I, I, I bought the car um, partly because the, the guy said it was old reliable. Mm -hmm. um, being that it's not all hopped up and it's got highway gears, um, you know, I could take it like down to Tampa or something, you know, an hour and a half, two hours each way. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm kind of looking forward to. Okay. Now you went to a car show the other day. Was it with Don, Don Garland's, right? Yeah, back in uh, November when I finally got it running semi-decently. Mm -hmm. um, I took it to Don Garland's Saturday's event. I took my 69 Plymouth to. That's uh, people's choice kind of thing. But Sunday's was, you know, specific classes. You're competing against people with like-minded cars, you know. Uh, mm -hmm you know, style-wise and, and gotcha. models. And uh, surprisingly, it won first place. I was that's, hoping, but wasn't That's wasn't That's expecting. pretty awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure you were like, wait, wait a minute, let me listen again. What car? Well, they, they called third place, it wasn't me, and I said, I'm out. And then they said second, I said, yep. And then they said first, and I was shocked. That's great. Yeah. 
And do you think it had anything to do with the originality of your car? I think so. Yeah, yeah. It was in an original class, and okay. it seems to be pretty clean. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, I know. I know these cars. They're this car when it was made. How do you think Dodge intended the uh, the Coronet? Was it for the, the the the? I know it's the top of the line, the five hundred. But just the Coronet in general, was it for the everyday man? Was I think the, so. The yeah, I think so. Yeah, and, and I think as you went upscale a little bit to the 440, and then this, mm -hmm. you know, got a little bit more ornate, a little more pricey, maybe mm -hmm. a little more prestige, a li yeah. little, you know. And this car was still compared to '65. Well, as they got a little further in, this car is actually not like a real full full sized car, huh? No, this is an in intermediate car. You still had the C bodies, which were, you know. The Dodge Monaco and the, uh -huh. the bigger cars, and your Furies and whatnot, huh? right? From the Furies, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 pretty insane. I mean, the car nowadays, people look at it and say it's big. Yes. I mean, and back then, it's like okay, it's yeah, it's midsize or whatever, you know. Right. And what do you think when people look at Cadillacs and stuff? <laughs> yeah, they're big. <laughs> Those are what we consider nowadays limousines. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So, I know you, you were seeing this car around and everything, and did, was this the car that you were actually looking for? Like, I mean, aesthetic-wise, were you really looking for something that was pretty much a stock-looking car? Yeah, I was looking for, I mean, I was open to, you know, something muscular like the other cars, uh -huh. but I was looking for something that was stock, something that... When I go to another car show, I go, man, how does that guy keep that car so clean? How come it's so stock? Mm -hmm. You know, how to, you know, keep your hands from doing stuff to it. Yeah. And that's the kind of car I thought I might entertain. I think you're doing good, man. And I like how you, uh, you just keep the car culture alive. And you're always, you, you meet a lot of people. It's, it's an exchange of information when you're talking to everybody and people think that oh they just go they just show their car no I mean car shows take a lot of effort too yeah and yeah. especially when you have a car there you're always trying to educate people and that's it's kind of like what we want to do here with this um, but you guys get more in depth because I had you've got an audience when you're when you're talking they're actually looking at your car and everything yes and, and it's a bit networking you know like Mopar guys are like the Chevrolet guys who uh -huh. have all kinds of options available to yeah. them part wise you know the Mopar guys are going to tell you about the um, place where you can find used parts that no one knows about and it's Mopar only and yeah. you know that kind of stuff which because there's fewer cars it's yeah. harder to get parts so that's yeah. real important Mopar only really started getting pretty popular probably like what 15 20 years ago uh, yeah, I, well, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but because um, there was a uh, there was a time where it was hard, and I I talk popular. I don't mean as in a good car. I mean just aftermarket parts for it, metal oh, vendors. Th yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Parts became available about that time. Yeah, and that's why it was so hard for Mopar guys because if you needed a specific part and there wasn't a lot around and you didn't know anybody, you couldn't get them. Yeah, it was you very know, hard. nobody was reproducing them. You yeah. know. So, John, I really appreciate this time again, um, and I know I'll be seeing you around. And normally I tell people, ask people if they want to have a, give a special shout out today, but today I want to give a special shout out myself. I want to give a special shout out to this guy right here. Um, he's helped me a lot. He's been a friend, a personal friend of mine, and he's a friend of the channel. He's given me some good pointers. He's given me some, some good leads, and he's set up some nice things too. And I've got some nice cars due to this man right here. So without any further delay, John, what about you? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I enjoy helping. Um, again, I, the, the shout out goes to my wife and you know my kids and such. Uh, you know they've been involved with this with me for a long time, and it takes a special person sometimes to go to all these shows and yep. have these ups and downs and such. So that's who I'd like to thank. All right. Well, you heard it from John to Danny. We'll see you later.